Alright guys, today we're going to look at quite possibly the most advanced gaming system of its time. Now the weird thing is the Commodore 64 is kind of forgotten and most people who aren't familiar with it probably didn't realize what a powerful gaming machine this really was for the time. Now this came out in 1982 and uh, it cost $600 for the basic system here and uh, although that sounds like a lot of money for the time it was definitely a lot cheaper than uh, most of its competition and um, it was a lot more powerful. It had 64K of RAM which doesn't sound like much uh, but it was a lot more than the machines it was replacing uh, you know the Apple II's and the uh, the Atari 400's uh, all those other kind of 8-bit computers that this was uh, kind of coming out to compete against you know this had more memory this had better sound processing uh, overall, it was a much more powerful machine, and yet it cost less. And uh, that's why this machine became so popular. Um, it runs an operating system called Commodore Basic 2.0. It's a very basic operating system. There's not a lot of um, really disk management in it. You kind of just uh, do what you have to do. Of course, if you know Basic, um, you can program your own programs for it. Uh, it's powered by a, a MOS 6510 8-bit processor. It runs at about 1 megahertz. And uh, like I said, it's got 64K of RAM, which is uh, 64 kilobytes. That's, of course, where it gets, um, you know, its name from, the Commodore 64. This sold about 30 million units. This thing ran from, well, obviously it came out in 1982. It wasn't discontinued until 1994. This is actually the biggest selling computer model, the biggest selling personal computer model of all time is the Commodore 64. Um, like I said, uh, it was uh, cheaper than its competition, uh, yet had more RAM. Um, really, the nice thing about, about Commodore is what, what they did was they developed their own processor, they developed their own uh, graphics processor, which is the VIC-2 in this, and um, the sound processor, which is the SID, which was considered a very good sound uh, processor for the time. Uh, but unlike their competition, who was of course buying kind of generic parts, Commodore owned all the parts. And I think that's one of the reasons they were able to sell this thing a lot cheaper than the competition. And, of course, that's why it uh, became more popular than its competition. There's about 10,000 applications available for this system. As you can see here, personal business aids, the kind of stuff you would expect, your word processing, uh, mail, inventory, accounting, all that kind of stuff you would expect for a business machine. You know, you could get your printer for it and all that. Um, communications, I mean, they, they did have a modem for this back in the day. Uh, so, you know, you could do email, news services, you know, once again, that kind of business stuff. Education, a lot of, uh, a lot of the kids my age will remember the Commodore 64s and the other Commodore computers, you know, in school. Very common computers in school in the 80s. But most importantly, what I'm looking at right now is the games. There was thousands of games for this system. More games than probably any other console in the 80s and um, some of the best ports, which is the weird thing. The Atari 2600 might have a lot of games, but it has a lot of bad games. And if you took all the kind of, you know, 7 or 8 out of 10 games, and all the really good games and the really good ports, I think the Commodore 64 would have the most. Uh, so anyways, um, I'm going to take a look at the system itself. Here's basically the original Commodore 64 here. Let me just move the camera here for a second. And it was basically your system and your keyboard combined into one, which was common for any 8-bit, you know, personal computer of the time. And, um, well, let's check out all the ports on it. On the side, you've got two controller ports. Now, they're just a DB9 mail port. Uh, so you can use Atari 2600 controllers. Of course, there was all the Commodore-specific controllers, but uh, you know you could save some money and just use your existing uh, Atari 2600 controllers. 
your power switch and your power inputs on the side. This does have an external power supply brick, uh, and then that plugs into here. On the back is where all your connections are, and there are a lot of connections on this. Here's a cartridge slot. That was mostly used for software. Um, you could get some games, some programs on a cartridge. Um, here's your channel selection for your RF output. You don't have to have the monitor for this system. You can just go to a television with the RF. And uh, here's the AV output. Now the cool thing about the Commodore 64 is it actually outputs what's basically S-Video. As far as I know, it was the first consumer electronics device uh, to output S-Video. And that's what the Commodore 64 monitor uh, uses. Uh, here's your serial port. That's mainly where your disk drive would plug into. Uh, the printer might have plugged into there too. I'm not 100% sure on that. Uh, and then you've got uh, the cassette port here. This is where the cassette deck would plug into. It was common back in the day to store data on cassettes. And um, and here's a user port for, for more expansion. Uh, so basically there's three different ways to get commercial programs or games onto the Commodore 64. One was, like I said, there was cartridges. That's probably the least common. There's not really a lot of games on the cartridges. And then there's the tape deck. You could get the tape deck for this, like I said, and you could get programs on the tape, on tapes. Uh, a little more common than the cartridges, but for the most part, most of your programs and most of your games, the large majority of the games would come on the floppy drive. So you'd need the floppy drive. I happen to have one of the floppy drives here, and uh, it still has the price tag on it. Three nineteen, did that say? <laughs> oh no, three ninety nine. Three ninety nine back in. Well, this is the redesigned version, so probably the mid eighties. Um, the original disk drive looks a little different. Uh, kind of matches my uh, system a little bit better. This is kind of like the PS2 Slim. <laughs> Uh, they did redesign the Commodore 64, and I actually have both versions. This is the Commodore 64C. And basically this was, like I said, just a redesign. Like I said, think of it as a PS2 Slim. It's the exact same Commodore 64 on the inside. Uh, it's just a little sleeker, uh, and it's more of a white color than that kind of brownish color that the original one was. So this is just a redesign. This came out in, like, like I said, would have been about the mid-80s. And uh, they show you some, some games and programs on there. So I'm going to show you some games next. Uh, that'll be part two of the video. And, um, like I said, I think most of you guys will be surprised if you weren't familiar with this system. I mean, even though it came out in 1982, um, you know, it blew away any home console in 1982. I mean, you don't compare this to the, you know, Intellivision or ColecoVision as far as the game's graphics and sound go. This will blow them out of the water. This was even really competing with NES and Sega Master System in the 80s, in the, in the mid to late 80s. And uh, I'm going to show our type. So here you can see there's lots of sprites moving on the screen at that one time. Um, the music's really good. Uh, fast pace, you know, decent color. Uh, like I said, it really did blow any console away of the time. It really did. So there you go, part two. I'll show even more games. I'll load up my uh, my Model 2 system with a disk drive and show you how to load games, and, uh, and I'll show you the monitor. The monitor is pretty cool, too. There's a couple different monitors, the original version, which matches this, of course. And I have the um, the second version, which matches the, the newer model. And uh, like I said, they use S-Video to go from the system to the monitor. But the monitors also give you a composite input. So you could use the Commodore 64 monitors as basically an, an AV monitor television. Um, you know, you could plug a Nintendo or Super Nintendo or you name it, anything with AV jacks, you could plug into a Commodore 64 monitor. And uh, it actually gives you a really good picture. Um, but, you know, like I said, you don't have to use the uh, monitor at all. 
It's got the RF output. Uh, you can plug it into a TV. You know, so like I said, uh, this system uh, came out in 82. You know, as far as its game performance goes, you, it blows anything. Anything else that was out at the time, home console-wise, I mean, in television and ColecoVision, like I said, it just blows them out of the water. And, uh, you know, 64K RAM was pretty much double anything its competition had, cheaper price. Uh, it's no wonder this is the highest-selling computer of all time.